just um, doing a live working on the Hebao Hyper MT Plus 2. Just got a bunch of things that I got to do to it. Got a couple of upgrades for it. We got the orange springs. that I, I just wanted to test them out and throw them in, see if it actually changes anything. I obviously have the uh, battery tray that I broke when I slammed it into my ramp. And then <laughs> we also have the uh, servo saver, which I'm pretty sure was kind of either on its way out or whatever, and then slamming it into the ramp uh, kind of like finished it off. So I'm just going to be swapping out some stuff. I actually am going to be breaking into the... Um, the center drive here as well, just because I want to see uh, what's going on as far as uh, that transmission uh, is concerned. So um, if you're interested in watching, just hang out, surf into it, right? Because that's what it's all about, just ripping into it. Yeah, this is my um, this is my like fake light kit. Kind of makes it look like more of like a rat rod. Gosh, what's going on, man? Mats, what's up, brother? Asterian, what's happening? <laughs> Gus, what are you working on? Mats, are you doing more videos? Dude, I'm waiting. There's one specific video that I'm waiting for, brother. I can't wait to see you rip that thing open, man. You're killing me here, guy. <laughs> Icon, what's happening? That's a pretty good name, by the way. Um, what is it? RC RCZs or is it RCs? Um, I like your name because uh, Icon actually makes awesome lift kits. Rebuilding your SMT-10. Nice. RCs. I get you. So I don't know if anybody... Um, I don't know if I touched on it. But I've actually been uh, modifying uh, these um, hubs... Only because um, I've been kind of like increasing the actual uh, turning radius of this truck by filing these hubs down. And um, obviously because, you know, you move it, you know, just you shave off just a, a millimeter and you're actually gaining um, a heck of a lot more turning. So uh, but it's just like that process of just... Uh, Trying to figure it out, I guess, because the difference between actually shaving this area and then conforming this while also still maintaining that, you know, if it if it crashes or whatever with that servo saver, a lot, a lot of times what happens is the hub wants to slam up against this portion here. So just kind of keeping enough material, I guess, backed up against the other piece so that, you know, things don't snap off or... Or whatever so but um i gotta want to i actually want to pull out this uh this transmission as well um we'll just want to see what's going on in there i um i had repacked it a while ago um i can't even remember when i repacked it but i just wanted to see uh what's up with it Yeah, 
Hebao Hyper MT um, plus two. It's like a mouthful when you say that uh, name. Hyper MT plus two. RC Master, what's going on, man? Is the low C tenacity DB Pro a good start? Yeah. It depends upon what you're what you're doing though. If you're looking for a, an outright performance vehicle, yeah, absolutely. The DB Pro is a it, it, it's a heck of a good start. It all depends upon what you want to do. But yeah, the DB Pro is awesome. Oh, Trash Ninja, you're here, man. What's going on? Yeah, I know that story, Gus. I was just about to make a video of the Creighton. It started snowing. Well, good. Get the Creighton out in the snow. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we even know what snow is anymore over here. This is getting a little ridiculous. We haven't been getting any snow, which is kind of driving me nuts. I need some snow. I'm in Canada and I have a budget of 900,000. <laughs> That's a pretty good budget. 900 900,000? <laughs> no, I I see what you meant. You just missed the uh <laughs> Damn, that sets a pretty good budget right there. 900,000. Woo! That'd be awesome. Could you imagine that? <laughs> Somebody actually had a budget like that. Yeah, dude, I would have got like 900 grand to spend. Um, so, uh, Dr. Norman, the UDR is an awesome vehicle. Um, you kind of almost have to ask yourself what you want to do. The, uh, it's not, I'm not downing the UDR at all. It's a, um, it's a technical driver. It's awesome. I think because it's so scale, um, it takes it takes a little bit of uh, getting used to uh, accurately driving it. Oh, Trash Ninja's already answering everything. Buy everything. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yeah, I got a budget of 90, 900, 900,000. Just buy it all. Could you imagine if somebody said that? Well, you know what, though? I know you're saying that somebody will love the Mojave better, but looking at something, I can do a little bit of everything. Uh, Dr. Norman, you, you kind of still have to just... You have to know, like... Um, how do you say it? It's hard talking and wrenching at the same time for me. Um... The biggest thing is um, man, a little bit of everything. That's that's actually tough. Foundry, what's going on, brother? That last video you did, Foundry? Holy smokes, guy. 
I think it's a good thing that your wife kind of uh, shut you off a little bit. <laughs> oh my God, dude, you've got you've got a couple of bucks into some things there. Come on, get out. What does it look like? We got a. What is that? Is that a chip? That can't be a chip, is it? Yeah, buying local is actually really good. Um, definitely support your uh, local hobby shops. Right. If anybody wants to jump on, there's the link. You could take any RC on road, realistically. Almost, you know what's funny? It almost sounds like um, it almost sounds like he would be uh, better off with a um, probably like a DB Pro or like what everybody's saying the Mojave. The DB Pro is awesome. I haven't found any issue uh, with the DB Pro at all. Yeah, what are you Working on a Syrian. Anything good? Yeah. <laughs> a Syrian. I gotta gotta have you do better with your communication, man. Working on anything good? Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing? I might oh, you're have working to... on your hybrid. Nice. Yeah, but I'm pretty much taking out something because on my normal LRP, I killed the ESC. So I'm going to take the ESC of the hybrid. Oh, you are? My normal LRP is more important. And why did the, um, why did it burn out? What happened? Good question. I don't, oh, know. I don't know. I think I've been driving it for like two years. On too much. Like, I've been driving it too much. Yeah. Come on. Thank you. 
So I'm just doing is I'm, uh, I'm going to crack open the um, the diff here and see what's going on. I think I'm just going to um, throw a thicker uh, diff fluid in there. You know what he? Well, nine hundred. Don't forget that's that's probably not just that's that's probably not just the um, the RC though. I mean, that's probably you know everything. Yeah. If you don't want something that will break, um, again, that's that's. Sometimes it's a it's an inevitable, but the the Traxxas Max is actually pretty good. <laughs> Trash Ninja just subbed your channel. Nice. No time. So this is actually the uh, center differential for the um, Hibao Hyper MT. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take uh, at least one side. I'm going to take the cup off right here, be able to pull the bearing, and kind of technically be able to pull, I guess, it's not really a it's not really a ring gear in this situation. It's just a gear. But I want to pop that gear, actually break into the, um, the actual diff cup and see what's going on inside here. Might be that might be pinned from inside. Yeah, it is. Isn't it? Should be using a driver for this. Oh my god, my ears. Your ears? What do you have? Headphones on? Yeah. Ouch. <laughs> Watch out, headphone users. Yeah, see that seal again. Once again, that seal is not in place where it's supposed to be. I've had this thing broken apart before. Um, I had forgotten that the actual, um, the way it's attached is actually from the inside. But this seal right here, uh, consistently now, I guess you want to say I've been having an issue because last time I pulled this apart, that seal was actually not in place. And this time when I pulled it apart, the seal was actually underneath the gear. So I don't know what the heck is going on with that thing so see that little gasket or seal right there the thing was actually i don't know if you saw it i think it got caught but you could actually see it um it was actually underneath the gear that's that's no good What are you doing, brother? Asterion. Is your volume gone? Oh, it's back.
looks like it's time to kind of rebuild this anyway. We've got liquid airing in there. Yeah, it can be. Ah, uh, Kevin. Can be, but not everybody likes to work on this stuff. Talk to him. What's going on, man? Mets, what are you doing, man? Jump on the live. Gotta get some what? Photogenic? What the heck is that? <laughs> gotta get I gotta get photogenic. Chris, what's going on, man? Oh, footage. <laughs> Mets, you just got rid of two of your nitros? I should be doing. I should be working on this thing right here instead. Working on the cardboard. Trash Ninja, why don't you jump on, man? Oh, yeah, I saw that uh, Ken Block with him running that electric.
Um, is there a Walmart near you? Walmart might have it. What are you on right now? Doesn't uh, whatever you're on right now have a camera? This little screw out. We'll be able to get the pin out. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that funny how they design that like that? Get out. Get out. What are you using for audio? Noticed in your last video, you are not using, you are not wearing a headset. Uh, so I was actually, um, for audio, I'm actually using one of those um, uh, Blue Yetis, the uh, Blue Oval or whatever it's called, this thing right here, one of those. It's a pretty good mic. The only thing is that, uh, obviously, if you talk, like, too close to it, you get those mic pops. The Foundry, your setup. Oh, my God, dude. Are you kidding me? Holy, holy insane. I mean, I know people... You know, have money to spend, but wow. That's more like just insane spending. Oh, really? That's weird. Well, the, the, you don't hear any feedback, right? Why would there be feedback, though? You mean like um, feedback when somebody else is on the stream kind of thing? Saved up for a little over two years. A little over? Holy smokes. Oh, Kevin, no, I haven't. <laughs> nah, because the thing is, right, is that uh, other work... Kind of takes priority sometimes. I've actually got it. It's actually right there. It's sitting right there. It's kind of like it's ready. I just got to do the video. Ultrasonic cleaner? Uh, probably never. I ain't got no time for that. So if I hop on right now, everything you're saying, my microphone will pick up and feed back to you. I usually wear a headset for the... You know you know what's funny? Um, Foundry? <laughs> I actually have no idea about any of that. Um, kind of went over a couple of things with um, uh, Chef. He's... Uh, He's got a, a pretty nice setup too. When it comes to any of any of that kind of computer stuff, um, I don't I don't know anything.
Foundry, you want do you want to jump on the live right now? The uh, the link is right up there. Or here it is. Paste. Bam. Earl, dude, where have you been? I thought you died. I haven't seen you. I've actually been asking everybody, has, has anybody seen Earl? <laughs> dude, seriously. Been so busy uh, making real money? <laughs> Uh, right now, I'm just working on um, the the Hibau Hyper MT uh, two's uh, center diff. Just um, cleaning everything up and just throwing some uh, throwing some new grease in there. I'm gonna actually throw a million in there. More, that's right. More my wide max bids from Earl. They got people turned on to you, brother. Earl has put a ton of effort into his maxes. Actually, it's him. It's uh, yours and your daughter's, right? They're both. You, you guys are both on wide max now, right? Pretty sure. What's up, Asterian? You're back again. What happened? Gus, your wide max kit will be there Monday. Nice. Asterian, something is wrong with your stream, man. It keeps dumping out. I know. <laughs> the myth, the legend. Behind the wide max tuning. He is too. Make sure you wear gloves whenever you're using or working with solvents and oils so that you project, uh, protect your hands and your bloodstream from all this garbage. I know I keep trying to throw a Styrian on, but every time I throw them on, it does a black screen. So I don't know what's going on with his internet. I'm going to try it again. He just popped on again. Mysterian, are you there, brother? Yeah. Fine. Yeah, there's no audio now. Oh, there you go. Jesus Christ. Hey, watch the language. What's wrong with you? The internet connection is perfect. Yeah, I like that too. Um, how he does that—that that control group kind of thing. Awesome way to do it. Earl, what's happening, brother? What's up? <laughs> oh, you're in the shop today. You're in the real shop today. <laughs> Man, work's work's been hectic. Yeah, it's been a bad week for work. Well, it's a good no. That's a good thing for work. 
<laughs> yep. Get to got to got to pay for that uh Fortinator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, but it was funny because like I I haven't I even jumped on uh True Boys just to you know see if you were there and I'm cuz I was <laughs> honestly starting to get concerned because you're usually always there. Huh? And I was just yep. like Earl, I haven't seen Earl at all. Yeah, no, no, I, I agree. I, I've been trying to comment on people's posts just to let them know that, hey, I'm still around. You're still alive? <laughs> yeah. Work, working 18 hours a day, it, you know, it's hard to get anything done. Yeah, getting paid to open sunroofs, you know. Yep. No, this was a bad week. We we had a tractor go down, and then the whole Colby thing went on, and yeah, yeah, in Hollywood. So it it messes with everything. And now, how close was that to you? Uh, that Sunday, we were actually filming two miles away. Wow. So, um, it you know, and then all the events that they put on for Colby at the Staples Center and all that, all the transportation. That's that's what I do. So. Yep. Oh man! We have to get all the all the trailers there, all the bathrooms set up. You know, it, it's a big ordeal. So that's crazy. So you were pretty much like right in it. Oh yeah, it closed up wow. there for filming. We we were slowly driving cars, trying, trying, trying to get the right shoes like done, right which I never worked. Boundaries like here. Am I closing feedback on the line? So, I don't think so. We, all right, so somebody else talk. Let's see if it uh, comes back to you. Oh. No, Earl was just updating about all the stuff that was going on, you know, kind of like wrapped up and involved around the Kobe thing. Yeah, yeah, out here in, you know, Hollywood, so. I was actually, I'm at my shop right now, so. Yeah, the real shop. Yeah, the auto repair store. Yeah. <laughs> People are wondering, what the heck are you doing with a camera to your face? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Walk, walking around, talking to my phone. Yeah, no kidding. Okay. What are you working on anyway? I, I, I watched your, uh, your bash this morning on the Max, on the, on the regular Max. Yeah, did, yeah. Uh, your diff you checked your diffs that looked yeah. really good yeah it was it was basically just because i wanted to see how that grease migrated throughout the um um throughout the inside because i hadn't uh -huh. used that particular grease ah. so i just wanted to see how that would work inside the max and everything was fine yeah yeah you were talking about that sand falling down and right the pine leaves and right, like, right. That's exactly the problem I had. It it falls in between the two sealed bearings right there. From the yeah, which is year. fine because the grease kind of attaches it to the case and it doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, it doesn't get into the center diff or diff or it doesn't right. go the other way to the drive shaft. So right. Yeah, no, it it. But you know that was coming from the spur gear cover. So all I did was you know put grease around the cap of that spur gear and bolt that down. Just so nothing would get in there. Yeah, that's smart. But I don't know how much it's really helping. Because I pulled it apart and there still was dirt in there. So Yeah. It's it's obviously it's it's um I don't think it's something that's gonna be resolved unless you're no you know, unless you're um it's funny, it's hard it's hard to talk when you're like doing stuff. <laughs> yeah, when you're trying to fix something. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I usually just listen. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so boy, with this um with this center diff, they do actually give you um little shims. It's almost like it's a thrust washer kind of deal. It's a it's a little barrier. In between the actual diff case and the spider gear, where the uh, the max doesn't give you that. So with these with these habows, they really um, they put some stuff into these um, RCs. Yeah, that EPX I I you know been playing with that thing's that thing's set up nice. Yeah, it really is. It really is. 
Ask Earl who's on set today. Oh, <laughs> nobody's on set. He's he, he's working at the garage. Yeah, no, I just I stopped by here. I I haven't been to set yet. But you know, the the show I work on is LA's LA's finest. So that's with Jessica Alba. Yep. So when's that's who the, I get to work with every day? When's the sixty nine going to be making a debut? That's what we were doing Sunday. Okay. So that's going to be in season two. Oh, good, because I'm waiting to see that. Yep. Yeah, that car will be in season two. Yep. Thank you. Know why? So, I'm wait- I'm, you know why I'm waiting to see that. <laughs> I think when you own one, you want to see them. Earl, what is your recommendation in regards to if you have the money to have both the Max and the X Max? Would you buy both or only one? Which one do you like more? That's actually I, I actually like them both. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because here's the thing: the the X Max is a beast. Well, how about but this? The problem with the X Max is trying to load it up and get it somewhere to where you can bash. Right. So, which one would you buy first? Um, I would buy. I I would definitely buy the X Max first. Okay, there's your answer, man. You know, it's just, it's a beast of an RC. Yeah, and, yeah, and, definitely. And, definitely. and once you get used to playing with that, when you grab the Max, you're you're really gonna you're gonna you're gonna appreciate what the Max is. You know what's what's funny, Earl, is that um, for me, I never had any intention of buying the X Max, only because of exactly what you just said. It's massive, so wherever yes. you go, you've got to have the room to be able to actually use it. Right. Yeah. Foundry knows all about this because that's literally all he does is massive scale. Ah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Foundry needs miles. Foundry just needs like a, an open warehouse or that's a, not a car uh, back there. <laughs> but, uh, that's a kid's working, car. Go car. Working on that, working on that Max just actually made me want the X Max. Yeah. You know, it's simple, you know, get into the diffs, get into the stuff that you break. It's really a simple RC to repair. Right. And that's if you break it. Yes, exactly. You know, out of, out of the four years I've owned, you know, my X maxes, I've broken one control arm. That's why I was going to ask you. What have you broken? Yeah, I broke, I broke a rear control arm and, and I did catch one of the rear inner bearings. They have a problem with that. It yeah. came apart. And when I was cleaning it, I noticed the, the, the seal and the sleeve laying on the axle. Wow. It hadn't come apart yet. Well, it was starting to come apart. Yeah. But I caught it, so I bought the RPM upgraded inner bearing and little hub assembly for it. Right. That was – um, that's a kind of a question that I've got for you. Um, on your on your DBXLs, because obviously you have – you have, uh, what, three of them, right? Yes. So – have you had any issues with your front hubs? The only reason why I'm asking is because I, I blew mine. I broke mine. And yeah. It, I, I think yours was more water related. No. So mine oh, was, it was, I, I felt as though it was cold weather related, but uh, as far as like an upgrade goes, what do you, have you upgraded anything of yours? I have not, but I, but I do I do lube them because they're a shielded bearing. Yes, they're not sealed. Right. So all the debris and dirt gets in there. So all I do is I take that little needle with the oil and yes. I lube them. That was one thing that I noticed when I pulled mine apart was that it was just shielded, not sealed. Yes, and that's that's a lot of the low C's and Armas, and a lot of them are that way. Yeah. Where that's what I like about tracks is, is they run, you know, shielded bearings. Right. Yeah, it was 260 plus back, so, it'll be- so for you in the snow and the water and all that, it's better to have the, you know, the seal. Yeah. Yeah. Cause what I was thinking is I want to, um, I do want to actually, uh, I want to replace the, uh, the hubs just because with that one, the way it broke, I just, I kind of want to just get away from that, but I also know then I'm transferring more 
um, more of that energy somewhere else, obviously to the next plastic part. And I don't want to replace everything because then I feel you're losing that flexibility that that gives you kind of that that little bit of give. You know what I mean? Yes. Yep. Yeah. The low C's are. I'm telling you, those DBXLEs, they're they're great RCs. They right? really are. You know, I like all of them, other than the steering issues I've had with them. But you can right. work around that in the dirt. You know, exactly. you just hit the throttle and spin it around. Yep. You know, so it really hasn't affected the way that I drive it. Now, if I put it on asphalt or concrete, you know, I have steering issues. But yeah. I don't run those RCs there. I run them in dirt. So yeah, running it on, well, running it on the asphalt and concrete anyway is going to be kind of hard on it. Yes. Yep. So. You know, it's just, it's hard to find a big area um, to run the, the fifth scales. Just, you know. <laughs> Mets RC likes your hat. <laughs> <laughs> Snap on. Yeah, that thing was probably about 300 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well it's year end so snap on gives us the jackets the hats all that stuff for christmas so that we buy next year yeah there you go <laughs> yep so, we're gonna, yeah, we we gonna keep you interested yeah <laughs> yeah you can see uh, i even think uh gene my partner he's a uh, snap on you see? yep nice everybody's everybody's dressed in snap on this time of year of course <laughs> especially when the snap-on guy shows up <laughs> yep <laughs> quick Never everybody like get your clockwork. jackets on like clockwork you know it so what are you building the, the diffs yeah i'm just what i'm doing is i'm switching it out to one million in uh in that mt um, because I, I, I'm sick of the front wheels just diffing out so bad. Yep. So I want to just and, lock, I want to lock it up a little bit. And that's what I did to my max when I first, uh, when, when it, when I first got it. Right. Because I noticed that when it tried to tip, you know, when I correct it, it would just diff out and then roll over like a dead dog. Yes. So by putting the, the 1 million in it, I could actually drive through it and two wheel it on the side. Yep. So, which, you know, it's funny because I didn't do it to my daughters. So when I did the wide max on both, I forgot all about me putting the 1 million in it. Yeah. So when I was running it, people started commenting, Hey, don't you have the 1 million in the diff? And I'm like, you're right. I do, you know, but my daughters doesn't, and they pretty much act the same anyway. What did you use for weights in the front and rear? I, I left the stock. Uh, weight in the front okay and i just put one million in the rear okay and the reason what? i did that because if i put the million in the front yep. it's going to limit my turning right right so what so i why i ended up doing is i did uh 500 in the rear and um 500 in the, in the rear front. and then 100k in the front and that actually feels stock uh, yes, you were, maybe, I, I saw your video and it looked good running. Maybe a little tight on the rear, but I like it because it just it just it goes right. It moves. Yep. yep. So I agree. I, I you know I, I it looked really good when you were jumping over that that little hill. Other than the rolling over on the landings, the arch yep. looked great jumping down the stairs, sliding around. It it looked really good. It looked like it handled great. Oh, George, I actually have no idea what the, uh, I should have probably been more, uh, I probably should have paid attention more, but I have no idea actually what's in there. Uh, but I am actually going to put 1 million in there right now. So inside that diff. And you got to remember you're in colder weather than I am. Right, right. So, I, you know, they could, they could be acting the same with the weight that you use. They could be, but I also do limit my use. Like I only wait until it's a fairly good day to go out because I'm really not interested in breaking stuff out of yeah. stupidity because it's, you know, zero degrees out, you yeah. know. But what was the temperature when you ran that, Max? I think it was like, uh, well, obviously 70 inside. <laughs> Yes. But um, once I was outside, I think it was like 40, 45, somewhere around there. So it wasn't that bad. Yeah. You know? see, to you, that's not that bad out here. 70s, 
are not that bad for us. Right, right, right. Th that's our cold weather. Exactly. You know, early, early morning might be 60s. You know. <laughs> so funny to hear that. It, it, it's crazy. And that, listening to you say, oh, it's not that bad. It's only 40. It's a warm day. <laughs> and you're, and you're teeth like, are chattering. <laughs> it's like I'd be in a snowman's outfit walking right. outside. <laughs> oh, you're right. It That's literally so snowed here this year, which never snows. Yeah. And we got snow, and I'm, I'm telling you, my kids were out there playing in it, wondering what all that white stuff was. Yeah, exactly. It's like my brother in Texas is a very similar situation where they very rarely ever get snow. So when they get snow, it's like, wow. Yes. And I wanted, to, I wanted to take the X-Max in it and do that. But by the time I went home and went back the next day, it was all melted. We've, You know what? And it's funny, too, because here we are in New England, and we have had... To be honest with you, one plowable snowstorm. I mean, I, I maintain I, heard you say that. I maintain a couple of driveways, but we've only had one plowable snowstorm, and we're already into well, we're not into February yet, but yeah. it's, just, it's a joke. I've yes, got you, I've got paddle tires that I want to use, you know. You yep. Know? <laughs> Dude, I saw you plowing that day, that video you posted, yeah, going around that parking lot, and I'm like, if that was me in that plow. Yeah, there would be no more parking stops or curbs left in that <laughs> lot. I don't know how you know where to stop. Well, but you do. Yeah, <laughs> you kind of, you just kind of get used to it. That's all. <laughs> like anything, you know. So, how many curbs have you taken out? None. I uh, see. Yep. 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 I actually haven't taken out one curb yet. I haven't taken yeah. out a curb. I haven't taken out a mailbox. I haven't hit any cars. I've had the only, uh, obviously the only thing that I'll ever hit is a manhole cover because you can't, you can't really adjust for that. Even yeah. sometimes if it's marked out, you still want to, I'll bump up the plow, but it might not be enough and I'll, you know, I'll grab it. So, yeah, but I'm, I'm really quick with that, with that controller. Yeah. <laughs> you have to be. Oh Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, Foundry, you you are, are you taking that trans? Oh, wait a minute, you already took the transmission out of that. Yeah, I already took it out, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna fix it, and I'll probably do a later video showing how to remove the whole thing. Well, yeah, well, or weren't the car that was right above it, the one that's right, kind of like behind? You yeah, the one right above it, right out, one right there right? that could do the same thing too. Yeah, exactly. I'm just probably gonna take the one out of that one and throw it in here, just so I can run it stock for a little bit longer. There you go. I, I kind of like getting a lot of stock runs just so I can show right. what it does break and how to fix it from there. Then I like to upgrade them from there. Absolutely. Yep. It gives me more I don't hear content. What he's you know? saying, just so you know. <laughs> oh, you can't hear him? Can't hear me? I can't hear a word. I see his lips moving, but not a word. I can hear him. Yep. Oh. This always happens on True Boy's thing, too. That's weird. That's when he resets us all. It's it's not his. It's something to do with StreamYard. Can anybody else hear Foundry? How about now? Turn the gain up a little bit. If I talk directly into the mic. That's weird. Yep. It's Ooh. when I popped in. All right, so now you can't hear him. That doesn't make any sense. Yep. I'm going to mute his mic and then I'll unmute him for a second. See if that changes anything. Foundry, go ahead and say something. All right. So how about now? Anything coming through? Still can't hear me at all? <laughs> it's quiet? No, I, I can hear you on YouTube. I was hearing feedback there for a I second. I think it's Earl. It, it, I think it is. What True normally does is kick me out and then bring me back in. Yeah, he's on there. I can hear him. Yep. Because uh, it's actually playing through YouTube right now, and I can hear Foundry on there. Oh yeah, yeah. It's 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 only when I popped on the Streamyard, it did the audio didn't come didn't follow me in. Yeah, Trash Trash Ninja says he can hear everybody. Yeah, okay. that's weird. I'm actually really shocked it's not feeding back. Usually, when I have the audio come from the computer, it just the microphone picks it up and it yeah. blows his ears out. No, it seems fine. 
It's not yeah, Earl. It's, <laughs> it's, it's not Earl. <laughs> no, it's 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 definitely something when I popped in. Yeah. But uh, like I like I always say, make sure when you Earl will, Earl will probably agree. Uh, make sure you wear gloves when you're working around solvents and all this kind of stuff because you do want to protect yourself. Oh yeah. Yeah, you don't want that stuff in your skin or your bloodstream. Right. <laughs> you know, I, I always forget to do that, and my hands are into the mess, and yeah, I'm gonna put gloves on. I'm gonna first wash them, reach for the dry. Yeah, you know it. But it's a lot better off than having cancer later on. Oh yeah. Yeah, we we don't know what this stuff is, what they're putting in it, and what's causing it. So, you know, I use a lot of soap and water so that I don't have to wear gloves when I clean them. So, is any of that is any of that coronavirus stuff anywhere near you? Oh yeah, it's at the airport, Ontario airport. So oh. they, they they basically told us at this point they've quarantined it. They have a you know whatever migration period but they're screening at the airports coming in right so right they're catching it at the airports but now we've got a letter going around the industry saying look keep water with you keep your throat uh moist don't yep. let it dry up because yep. once it dries up that's how it gets in man so drink plenty of water don't don't just down a gallon of water they just said you know take a sip you know every 10 15 minutes what was not so keep your throat moist yeah there you go Yep. What was not was uh, before any of that stuff happened, my wife and I, well, she was actually the one that brought it up because she's kind of in the medical field. And she was saying, wouldn't it be terrible if there was some kind of a, a virus that just, you know, started taking, I'm using the dumb form of how she said it, started taking people out. And then literally all of a sudden he has this coronavirus. Yep. It's like, wow. Yeah, we, we get it every, you know. 10 years we yep. have something bad that they haven't seen before right you know and it always starts at the airports right right true didn't stream yesterday but there are always problems yes I, yeah, he's back hysterian up. hysterian is saying there's actually that coronavirus stuff near munich and he's over in germany well munich germany so that's crazy yeah so are they screening? Are they screening at the airports out there? Asterion, are they screening? Certainly hope so. Yeah, I hope so too. No, he's not. Oh, yeah, he says yes, they are. Yep. Oh, good. Yep. Where are your gloves, RC? <laughs> They're right here. I got them. Yep. In the package where they should be. <laughs> um, I'm a very I'm a I'm a very good advocate for telling somebody that you should use it. That's why I usually say it when I'm not. So it's kind of like that memory thing going, and remember, still sealed. Yeah. Wear your gloves. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Foundries and steel He's got a whole box. Nice. <laughs> He's got a whole box. Yeah. Brand new. He's saving them. Yeah. <laughs> they're for well, special I mean, occasions, you guys see right? My hands, they always look like they're stained and dirty. Right, right. <laughs> so cut, stained, and dirty. That's how many gloves I use. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I am glad, though. My son, my son is pretty, uh, pretty good about it. He, he, um, he watches it, you know what I mean? He gets all that stuff for free anyway, which is great. So Yeah. That's that's actually to be honest with you, that's where I get my gloves from is that they give Medical. him so many damn boxes of gloves that he just yep. goes, Hey dad, I got a box, I got a box for you. So Yeah. Cause they wanna they definitely want to uh protect their employees. So Yeah, I get free safety glasses and gloves all day long. Right, right. Yep. 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 Well, Earl, I'm glad you stopped on because, like I said, people were wondering. <laughs> oh, I, I figure they would all week without posting any videos. Right. I got home last night and I was going to try to make a video, but it was like 1130, almost midnight, and I had to be up at four. And I was like, I, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> I, everything's fixed. I have nothing to fix inside. Yeah. Yep. 
Yeah, I subbed Earl's channel as soon as I saw the thumbnail with the green arms on that little Max. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's how you got my subscription. <laughs> that is, that's that's uh, Fondry's favorite color right there, green. <laughs> green. Yeah, anything green. Anything green. Perfect. I bet he's even got a green toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I probably do. <laughs> yeah, I never thought about using any kind of solvent or lacquer thinner to, to clean up bearings and stuff. So that, that was a good tip. Ah, well, no, definitely not the bearings. You know that. Um, oh, yeah. you know, Well, when I do my shielded or yes. sealed bearings, I cut the rubber off, clean right. them out, soak them, and right. then I re-oil them. Right, right. So um, the, you know. the lacquer thinner or the enamel reducer, it's actually um, – it, it helps. I think it just helps aid in the release of the silicone from the gears. It actually doesn't clean it off. You still okay. have to use a brush. I think it just aids in the release of it, and that's it. Yeah. Um, obviously, you got you know you are you already know Earl carburetor cleaner. You know brake clean whatever. That's what's really going to get the stuff off. Yeah, but yeah. Th those things also stain plastic. Yes. Yes. Yep. So, yep. you know, I, I have some acetone and, and, and some lacquer thinner and I've never used it. Right. You do so, have to use sometimes the right stuff to get the job done. Yep. So I always worry about staining the, the black plastic, you know, it'll turn it white. Turn it white. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Earl can't know because Earl's on a mobile. So I think the chat disappears for him. It uh, does. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, I think it does, and I, I I can go to the chat, but then it takes me off the the screen. Right, right, yeah, yeah, it takes them off. Yep. Earl, are you gonna get the green body? I'm assuming he's asking if you're gonna get the green body for the Max. I I I am, and I'm gonna get the green shocks for it as well. I I, I can't find them for sale right now, other than Traxxas. So I'm thinking about just buying a, a whole nother Max. Yeah, that's green. There you go. Yeah. Well, so because probably, I want to get the I want to get those arms off my orange car and put them on to a green car. Right. Right. You know what's funny is I didn't see anybody buy white, so that's why I got the white. <laughs> yeah, Dante's the only one that had white. Oh, does he? Yep. Dante had white and you have white. Yeah. I mean, and you know that they're, they're totally gonna get destroyed. I mean, the the first yeah. time out, the white's not going to be white anymore. Kind of be a an off gray. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Gus, Gus, you'll never wear gloves. I can't work with them. And my hand, yeah, your hand. Well, yeah, but the thing is, Gus, right? Come on, man. You got to know. Would you, what would you, what would you tell your kids? Are you going to tell your kids not to wear gloves or are you going to tell your kids to wear gloves? Do you know what I mean? So it's like one of those things where, you know, you gotta, you gotta do the right thing. You gotta say the right thing, you know? Yeah. Safety sure. glasses too, spraying that brake clean and it shoots back at you. Yeah. Right in your eyes. Yeah. You don't want to take an eye out. Yeah. Yeah. Mets has a new video. Mets RC has a new video. <laughs> Mets, look at you guy. <laughs> oh man. I just try to go through the comments right now. Because I just saw that, you know, he said Earl can't see the chat. Yeah. Yeah, I'll I'll pop out in a minute and start going through all the comments. I just my I dad was on the yeah, but the thing is, too, though, Gus, um, yeah, I don't know. I think maybe it depends upon whoever because you could have somebody that smokes cigarettes for 50 years and, they're, and they have no issue. Maybe it depends upon the person. I don't know. But, you know, how much do you want to chance it? You know what I mean? So yeah. Gus is saying yes to safety glasses. Come on, guy. Why? <laughs> why? You don't, you don't wear gloves. <laughs> I don't watch I've the been... news. Yeah. I've been wrenching since I was 13 years old, so um, I've been around cancerous material my whole life. Right, right. Yep. I'm well, actually 28 years old. I just look like I'm 50. 
<laughs> so, so what is that telling you right there? Make sure, kids, make sure you wear gloves. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Matt Sky, you gonna jump on or what? Come on. Jump on, Matt. We got Foundry here. Come on, even even Earl's taunting you. <laughs> Jump on. Maybe I'll be able to hear uh, hear him. Right. <laughs> Can't be. Found dead. Foundry looks like he's got a whole workstation going on in there. Do it. <laughs> Foundry just did a crazy video. Just basically, he did like a walkthrough, just showing his stuff. It's like. Man, you want to talk. I mean, you've you've spent some money, Earl, but when you when you look at what he's got, it's just like, damn, you know that every RC <clears throat> bought is big money. It's not it's he's no there's no joke. It's, it's over the course of some time. Looks like some big RCs in there. <laughs> uh, I'm lucky my wife lets me do it and she lets me expand the area, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> as long as I'm happy. <laughs> right. And I'm leaving her alone. Are you able to hear him, Earl? I, I'm not. I'll have to pop out and pop That's back so in. Weird. It'll probably it'll probably reset the sound. Because everybody, everybody, I I wonder if it's I, I don't know, but I don't get it though. Why would it just be you that can't hear Foundry? Well, it's like if Mets comes in next, he yep. might not be able to hear me or Foundry. Really? Yeah. And then what happens is once we're all in there, I know true. He always. He resets everybody one by one. Basically, he puts them back out and brings yeah. them back in, and okay. the sound follows sometimes. That's That's Is that only a mobile thing? Oh, Foundry was asking yeah. if it's only a mobile <laughs> thing. No, no, because uh, Gap and those guys, uh, that you know, it happens to Gap and Dante. Who started off with a shelf in one car? Who are uh, Foundry? <laughs> I used to keep the car in my garage. Then I used to keep it in my car in the trunk. Yep. Uh, and then I switched to race gas. And to be honest with you, with the, the ethanol free gas, it doesn't smell. So I keep oh, it up for me. And RC Master says, and she's your accountant. <laughs> <laughs> You know it. I don't think she knows how much. But <laughs> she has an idea. Oh, look at that! I think I think uh, I think Metz's video just uh, just um, yeah. So Metz's video just uh, uploaded. I think. I think it is. Yes. So if anybody uh, wants to go check out Metz RC, uh, his uh, his video just uploaded right now. It's on YouTube. It's uh, Metz RC. See how can I get that link on there? Why did I not get a notification for that? I see uh, it. You probably will. It'll probably just take time. I, I've, I've been not getting a lot of people's notifications lately. Like I have to really? go to the channel to see it. I got the notification for the live stream. And that's right there. SDX 24 Rubicon first down. Now the police chase. What does the police chase over by you now? Yeah, it's all right. It just popped on the on the TV that they're chasing somebody again. Oh, and nice. Like every day. Yeah, but that's because it's California. Yeah. Oh no, what another slow speed chase? <laughs> another slow speed chase. <laughs> oh no. It's probably a Prius. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's hybrid. <laughs> Hold on, guys. We gotta go charge. Yeah. We'll start this pursuit in a minute. <laughs> He's just trying to go get some pizza and do pull-ups. Right, right. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, I gotta get back to working on this thing. Yep, I'm gonna pop out. I gotta get some work done. All right, Earl. 
All right. Nice seeing everybody. Good seeing you too, man. Let's right. nice talk to you guys you. later. Have a good one, Earl. <laughs> you too. Take it easy, Foundry. Even Take though I can't back. hear you. Yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> you really can't hear me. Well, yeah. <laughs> Mass Master, everybody take it easy. Everybody saying bye, Earl. <laughs> Gus, why don't you jump on, man? Since Mets doesn't want to. Come on, Mets. You just uploaded your video. You're good. Jump in. Finish cleaning up the house. <laughs> Dumping out on me, guy. What time is it? One thirty. So you like doing the live streams, huh? Um, yeah. I mean, what happens is that it, it's a way to be able to communicate with everybody. Because when you just when you just do your videos, the only way to communicate is by whenever you get like a notification. And like what True was saying was that a lot of times we actually don't get those notifications because for some strange reason YouTube. Like, um, I think they like pre-screen for, I don't know, maybe like bad words or spam or I don't know what it is, but I'll go into my spam folder and there'll be like a whole ton of comments from people that are in yeah. spam. And it's like, it makes you, it kind of makes you look like you're a jerk because you're not replying yeah. to people. So when you do the yeah. lives, what's nice about that is that at least you can communicate to people like right there, one-on-one. -on -one. Granted, if you're trying to work on something, you also miss stuff. So that's why it's nice like how when uh, the, the True Boys uh, does their stream and a couple of other guys do their stream, they'll have like people fielding questions and, you know, so that things don't get missed and people don't get bent out. Yeah, of shape. That's the thing. I need somebody to do that because if I'm involved, I won't even see the chat. I'll be too busy right. working on doing. Right. The other problem is I tend to put music on a lot and then I'll get monetized and right. all that stuff, you yep. know? That actually happened. That happened a couple of times with me. Was that um, I actually just had a video. It wasn't even there was no sound. I made sure that you know I wasn't going to get a strike. But I guess because the and I think the video probably pay, played for like ten seconds or something like that mm -hmm. on the screen on the stream. And all I was doing I was just saying that one of the subscribers, uh, Chef Beardsley, he looks like the bass guitarist from Static X. And I was like, hey, there he is. I got to find that picture. Here he is. Everybody wants to know what uh, Chef Beardsley looks like. This is him. <laughs> and I left it on there. And I, as soon as I hit end on the stream, I got an email saying that I got a copyright strike. I'm like, the hell are you talking about? I didn't play no audio. Ooh. And it was literally just because the content was there. Yeah, it, they hit you quick on anything they can. It's crazy, though. <clears throat> Isn't it free advertisement? You know, and what's even worse, they can claim stuff that's not even like a. I was using a, an app. I forget what it's yeah. called, but it has music, and they, it's all like you could pay for it. But I was using the free demo of it, and uh, on one of my videos, I think that when I did the Li Bash video, they claimed it, and the song they were claiming it was. I looked it up, not even similar. Really? So I, on my own, I went and I disputed it, and just saying it's not it and putting the real title. Is not how you're supposed to dispute it. Yeah. So it got denied. YouTube then allowed me to use their program to change the music where it's kind of, it just made it sound crappy. That's all. Right, right. So they did that and then it was fine. I looked it up. What I was supposed to do is I was supposed to reach out to the company and they disputed on my behalf and it would have been fine. I see what you're saying. So I did it the wrong way. But okay. It was, it was stupid that they, they claimed something. It's its own 10 of my other videos. They only claimed it on that one because that one was getting views. Yeah, and it wasn't even what they were claiming it was. Well, you know what's funny is because uh, one of my other, you know, one of my, you know, kind of like have like favorite groups, right? So mm -hmm. one of my favorite groups is Godsmack. So mm -hmm. what was funny was that when I first started getting into do uh, doing videos, I found this video and I was just like, wow, I was like, this would be great for my video. I actually emailed God Godsmack and said, mm -hmm. hey, can I use this video? I didn't get, I didn't get a reply. You know what I mean? Can I use right. like the background yeah, as background music? I mean, I didn't expect to get a reply, but I did yeah. it anyway. It's just like, hey, you know. <coughs> yeah. 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 A friend of mine did the same yeah. thing. He got, he got permission. He actually got the written permission through email and everything. He didn't have to pay anything. Yeah. And he was using it, 
and he, he's small, his small channel still, so he's not monetized. He's got yeah, maybe yeah, a hundred yeah. subscribers, yeah. and it was great. But then all of a sudden he started working because he found out that if they decide, because it, it doesn't have to be the, the band that comes after him. It could be the, the record label that comes after him. Right. And then if they do it, for him to have to dispute, he has to go show a little paperwork and go. It just it, it said it was too much of a headache. He ended up just getting rid of it anyway. Yeah. Because it's they're, they're just going to demonetize you. And then you don't get anything that whole time. Yeah, exactly. Even better, he was trying to grow the channel, so that video was going to be way back in his history. He's going to forget about it, and when he tries to get monetization, they'll deny yeah. him, and he won't know why. Right, because you'll have that strike. Yeah, because it's way back in the history, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah that's, that's what RC Master's saying right now. He's like, "Everyone, go check your spam for my stuff because my comments always get in there somehow." <laughs> Let me go check. I, I made mine pretty lenient. On the settings, but yeah. I, I was careful because they use the word "describe," it gets blocked. Yeah, 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 exactly. Because you have people that come on that just literally all they care about is just causing trouble. So yeah, that too. Although I have one that was putting some comments out there that kind of surprised me, and somehow they made it onto the thing. They were yeah, every once in a while that will happen too. I noticed that. Let's see. So when obviously rebuilding this diff, this isn't like stuff that people don't know, but just make sure you stick that whole ring in there. <laughs> don't forget. Because <laughs> that's what's going to seal your grease and your crap from getting in and out. <laughs> yep. And also put a little grease on that O-ring. And then we've got a little bit of uh, a shim right here. And what I do is I actually use, I call it assembly lube. It's just a very light drop of oil. Is what I do. And of course I can't find it. <laughs> Where it is that? Right there. Oh boy. One more light. And make sure you wear gloves. <laughs> what was that saying on that door, right? Hey, you know. At least it's there. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm not paying attention right now. I really am. Telling people to do stuff, I'm not even doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay. So again, like I was saying, um, when I'm doing this diff, I am putting in one million into this diff, and this is for that Habao Hyper MT Plus Two. Where's my one million? Probably should have set the one million out here first. I know it's here somewhere.
Now I'm just going to assemble the spider gears. Make sure you put those little shims on the ends there. getting so I can't even see here all right let's try this again so this is what happens when you do stuff live So make sure you have your make sure you have your flat actually facing up when you do this just makes it easier <laughs> and don't do stuff see what i mean don't do stuff over your trash can because nine times out of ten one of you working on is going to go into your trash can don't ask me how i know I just do. <laughs> oh, my God. Now, where's the other? Yeah, right here. Little spider gear. Put your shim on the end there. Having the oil on here, what it does, in my opinion, just kind of helps keep things together. Make sure you wear gloves. What they say, do as I say, not as I do. Exactly. Funny thing, too, is trying to make sure you're in shot, too. Exactly. Funny thing, too, is. Say. Just make sure those flats interlock. Make things, make sure things are pushed down into place. Give it a little bit of a rotate. That way you know everything is settled. Check out. Now I know a screw launched off here somewhere. No idea where it went. There it is. It's not a screw. It's actually one of the pins. <laughs> When's the gold party happening? Uh, it might be good to actually use an assembly tray. <laughs> Not just a piece of cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> That'll probably help, right? <laughs> yeah. I actually think I'm going to start assembling one of the fifth scales this uh, coming Monday. Nice. Yeah, one of the ones that you've had just sitting in a box? Yeah. It, yeah it's What it really is is I just didn't want to spend money on them because I know how I am. Yeah. I, I'll build them, and then I need this engine, need this servo. You know what's I need funny this is I... I I know I'm I know I'm not the only one that does this, right? So an RC comes out, let's say it's even like a pre-order or whatever, something just showed up at the LHS. Mm -hmm. You go get it. And <laughs> I have stuff still sitting like you. It's still sitting in the box. But yeah. I had to have it. I had to have yeah. it here. It's like, like oh, I need to have it so I could do and it's just gonna fit, but Right, you, you do have to because you have to know where you're gonna put it. That's why I right. keep this one on the right. shelf in the box. <laughs> I guess it's that peace of mind of just knowing. Well, at least it's here. Yeah, I have it. You, they, you know they what do I mean? Go away. You know they do. Go. <laughs> I was gonna get a second one of the Mustang. Yes, I kept waiting on it, waiting on it. Now it's gone. I can't get another one. So, right. 
You got to right? jump on these things. The way, yeah, the way things sometimes can fly out of stock. Like, yeah. so like one of the, th you know, I'm not like any kind of, well, here, here's what's funny, right? So my wife actually made me a cup. Mm -hmm. Mandalorian, right? Oh, nice. So you kind of sometimes do like these little things on your channel to kind of, I guess, um, keep it interesting, right? So I've got, mm -hmm. like, I've got a bunch of ideas and it's actually, you know, funny it's wrapped around the mandalorian because it's actually a very popular thing right now and if you put like these little addition things in here so like a buddy of mine his uh channel's name is joe daddy's garage and you know it's obviously it's a regular real garage he does auto body uh auto restoration uh, mechanics you know all kinds of just crazy stuff but he's got this little iron man you know figure Mm -hmm. And he'll just have it placed somewhere randomly. So it'll be like <laughs> welding. And as he's welding, you like you if you're paying attention, you're like, what the hell is Iron Man actually doing hanging on to? You know what I mean? <laughs> he'll like specifically yeah. place it. Yep. And what I told him, I said, what you should do is do a giveaway and say, Hey, on my last video, where was Iron Man? If you can answer the question right now, you get a shirt. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. something like it, that. Yeah. It would keep like it keeps uh, an interaction. It keeps like, you know, people interested, you know, saying, man, I got, I want to watch that video now because where the hell was Iron Man? Cause I didn't see it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like it's those little things that just keep people engaged, you know? Exactly. Cause I, I don't know about you, but when I look through my analytics, it's incredible how many people, like I have a lot of people asking for longer videos, right? And when I post a longer video, and they watch one minute before they drop off. Exactly. Because it's like what, well, that I don't was, what I'm doing. <laughs> so Mets RC, he's he's um he's been gaining subscribers and he's doing he's 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 doing his best. He's um he explained it, he's a little you know, he's camera shy because it's one mm -hmm. of those things where everybody I think is, unless it's uh, like, I, like I, I completely, to I totally am, you know. I, I don't put half my videos out because I just I don't like the way I look. I don't like the way I sound. Right. I, right. I, I feel stupid. I mean, especially when you edit them, you go through it and you see yourself over and over and over. And it's just like. You're your own goodness. worst critic. Yeah, exactly. And what you have to realize is that it's like trying to, trying to put, you take like you, when you do a video, you almost have to take yourself out of the situation and look at it as to what attracts you to watching someone's video. Like, what was it about that video that you watched the entire thing and try to take away from that and try to go, all right, well, in my next video, I'm going to try to focus in on this. Or, you know, I wanted to see how far that thing jumped. Or, you know what I mean? It's like. Yeah, I, I do a lot of like, I watch a lot of videos for inspiration. Right, right. What it is that right. attracts me to it. And how so, I think the problem is when I watch myself. I sit there and I go, I don't want to watch my, who would want to watch this? Why am I doing this? Right. I'm right. trying, but. Right. Yeah. Um, and I, I've always referenced this guy because um, when I first started doing my YouTube videos, I think the reason why I started doing YouTube wasn't for, it wasn't for any of this. This, it, it literally like YouTube, it seemed to like direct me to doing this. This was almost an accident. My dog died two and a half years ago, I think now. Two and a half years ago, and what I did is, I guess, to compensate for the death, I needed something to, to get my mind off of it, so I bought a Gen 7 crawler. Okay. And I just, I don't know, I started using that, and I was like, you know, I'm going to film it. I'm like, I'm just going to film it. Let's see, you know, what happens. And what was nuts was I did more automotive videos than anything else. Uh, automotive, uh, building landscape tie walls, uh I even did a video using my backpack blower. It's just, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like I was just throwing stuff on there because initially my whole YouTube channel was only about sharing with my family and for my kids. Mm -hmm. That's if, how mine was originally. If their if their kids want to want to see what whatever I'm going to be called, whether it's Grandpa or or whatever, or even their kids' kids, it was like if you want to see who I was, here you go. Because if it unless YouTube takes it down. Yeah, no, you'll, you'll be on there forever, you know. You'll be on there forever. There a lot, yeah. You know, I mean, think about it. Like, like even what's a, a killer? Like, 
for what just happened, okay, for Kobe, right? Because mm -hmm. he obviously, you know, was was an icon as far as you know what he was. Now his wife is constantly going to be reminded about Kobe. I mean, think about it. It's just like, yeah, it's I, I can't even imagine. No, I no. can't even. I mean, that that whole situation, even that that other family, the it was the mother, the father, and one of the daughters, and I think there's two more kids at home who are now orphaned. On the same helicopter. Crash, crash ninjas. What, is, what do you? Yeah, say? he's offering me fifty bucks to build my car. Nice. <laughs> yeah, do it. Do it. Give him fifty I, bucks. I enjoy doing it though. That's part of the fun, you know. They could buy a lot of coffee with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll, I'll have him build that one. I'll drink the coffee that I got right. the other one. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I, I forget because it's be like that's what happens because I was talking to you. Mm -hmm. So I'm not I'm not paying attention to the to the comments because that's the other thing that happens too is when when you have the two things going on here, you start talking to an individual and you forget about you know everybody's comments and people are getting all bent out of shape, like why aren't you answering my question? It's just like, dude, I'm sorry, I was talking to Foundry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what what I did last time I got on live, I got on um uh Steve O's live thing. What I did with then is I put the comments on my iPad. Yeah. And that way, when I was working over there, I had my iPad here. It made it a little bit, but it still I had to like think to look at it, you know, but right. it made it a little bit oh. easier when I'm walking around doing things, you know? That's why I have this right here. I've got my, I've got my TV with the YouTube on so I can see the comments okay. coming, but you still miss it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But the other thing, the other thing too is uh, when, when it's, when it's on the, when it's on the TV, the comments disappear. They only stay on for just so long. A couple seconds, yeah. Yeah, and that's that's what you know happens at least with the stuff that I do. So I gotta get back to <laughs> I gotta get back to working on this thing. <laughs> yeah, I actually gotta drop out. I gotta go pick up my kids from school. All right, man. Hey, this thank you. Fun. I'll going. hop back on another time. It's awesome, man. All right, I'm glad you came on. All right, take care. Thanks for All having right, me man. on here. We'll later. see you later. All right, back to this thing here. So now, now we're actually at the point. I know this is like crazy. The stream's going to turn into like a six-hour live stream. But um, now's the time when you want to go ahead and put your one million in. And I'm using a clean uh, screwdriver just to kind of dig it out. And this should be nice. This should actually uh, lock this diff nice. So here we go. Now I'm gonna let this. Um, I'm gonna let this settle in. It should actually self settle as it sits for a period of time. It'll actually self settle. If that makes sense to you. Maybe I'll push it in. Thing is, is when you push it in, right, the suction of your finger coming out actually pulls the gears out. So you kind of just like, you know, push it to the edge of the side or whatever. See what I'm saying like that? So I'll probably put just a touch more, maybe. Actually, it doesn't look too bad. What do you think? That looks all right. Maybe just a touch more in the center. Just like that right there. Do that like that. Done. And I'm going to take the extra and put it on the back side of this. Where the pin goes in. Cap the stuff off when you're not using it so contaminants don't get in there. Don't forget your um, your O-ring that actually goes there. And like I said, just this is just the way I do it. Um, um, I use it's just like a like using assembly lube. Wear gloves. Got my shim on there. 
It should stick with the oil in there. Little assembly lube on this thing right here. Did I put the bearing on? <laughs> I did put the bearing on. There we go. Another little drop. Grab your pin, throw your pin in. Just make sure it's kind of like centered or aligned. Throw your gear on. Good to go. Now this is where this is where I'm not liking um, this little gasket right here. Like why? The first time I pulled this stiff apart this gasket um, was not where it should be. And then the second time we just pulled it apart right now, the gasket wasn't where it should be again. So I'm wondering if it's because I rolled the gasket on before, as opposed to maybe kind of stretching it over. So right now I'm actually just gonna try and stretch it over, see what happens, which it's probably rolling. Come on, never mind. It's not gonna stretch. Oh, there we go. It's actually on there. So here's something I'm seeing. Maybe that's part of the problem. I don't know if you can see that. So you can actually see it better than my eyes can. There's a little something right there causing that gasket to not settle down. It's like it's like some kind of weird burr. I wonder if you guys can hear the audio loop. Yeah, I am going to be doing If Trash Ninja, if you're talking to me, um, boom, anybody want to jump on right there? Just, it just fired off. Come on. Get on. Watch. It's probably going to break. What it's doing is it's just, it's just rolling. I can't get my fingers on it. God damn it. Come on. <laughs> see, this is the stuff about live. Like I said, you get to see the fact that I am no guru. So then, obviously, now you know you've got the seal on. <laughs> I'm making myself laugh, you guy. And then just line up your uh, line up your pieces, parts here. <laughs> line up your holes. Throw throw your screws in. We'll get this going one day. I am gonna just <laughs> do this by hand real quick. If I can even find what driver it was. Is it this one? No, it's not this one. This one's too small. Ah, oh, man. Maybe it's this one. Yeah, there we go. Come on, get in there. There we go. Now, maybe, um, maybe during assembly from before, maybe it just like slipped out of place because I didn't keep it down. That's a possibility. So I am going to apply some pressure on there. Anybody want to jump on that? That thing is right there. This 
is like I said, this is the fun about doing live. There we go. That's better. I wonder if that's what happened. I wonder if the last time I assembled this, maybe the gasket actually rolled off. And maybe that's the same thing that actually happened from the factory. When this was assembled, maybe the gasket just kind of rolled off. And if you see, when I'm doing this, when I'm using this driver, I I just I kind of just keep the diff kind of in my hand and I allow it to roll. Is that I have enough of a grip on it, but then you watch. See, I allow it just to spin. And then now because this is plastic, I will just kind of just torque it by hand just so we don't strip things. Or it's a glass reinforced something. Yeah, that's a lot better. Don't forget to put your set screw in that allows you to take out your um, your uh, pin for that internal gear. Oop, don't cross thread it like I was just doing. Don't put it in too far. <laughs> Perfect. There we go. So now we've got one million uh, installed in the uh, the diff located in the transmission of the Habao Hyper MT Plus Two, so um, that should give it a nice that should give it a nice lock. I think feels good. Definitely feels a lot better than what it was. It was definitely way loose. And I am actually not going to bother cleaning this out because inside of here it actually looks pretty mint. So I'm going to do, like I said, a little bit of assembly lube just on that bearing. So that bearing is just going to sit down into this pocket right here. And we'll check out this case right here. That looks fine. I think I'll put that... Uh, waterproof grease that I've got or water resistant grease that I've got inside there. Don't forget to cap your solvents. Call his cell phone. Complaint. Complaint department. Yeah, so how do I how do I moderate a moderator? <laughs> what do you mean? Did I give you the wrong link? Oh, I gave you Earl's thing. Sorry. <laughs> Whoops. I gave you Earl. <laughs> there you go, guy. There it is. <laughs> oh, my God. Sorry. Stop it, Asterian. I'm not that old, dude. And just, I just don't pay attention to stuff. <laughs> Oh, man. Sorry. 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 Yeah, dude, you probably should have called me. There's the link right there. That is the link. That's an active link. Did actually somebody call me, too? I did. Oh, sorry, Mets. The link is there now. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, my God. He hasn't actually read the comments for more than like one second for like 10 minutes. I do it's hard. Asterion, think about it. If you're working on something, you're trying to like pay attention so you don't mess things up and forget pieces because we are putting together a vital like organ to this, you know, MT. <laughs> oh, there he is. There he is. Boom. Nice. What's up, guy? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> gotta say it's about time i know i uh, i just threw the link on and walked away i forgot that that link was was to earl's uh channel 
People like clicking on it going, oh, what the hell? This ain't it. Uh, oh I'm finally about to fix the rampage. Remember that uh, that vent shaft? Yes. Now, what do you mean? So you got the parts in, obviously. Oh, hold on. Wow. Hello. <laughs> hold on. See, I'm not the only one. Trash Ninja, why aren't you? Why aren't you jumping on, brother? I see, Master. Why don't you jump in, brother? Yeah, you're right. Trying not to stab yourself with a screwdriver. Exactly. RC Master, jump in, man. I know. Yeah. I know. See? Max jumps on and then he just takes a call. Walks away. Walking around. All right. Thank you, sir. Yeah, this guy. I mean, he shows up on the stream and then he just takes a phone call, walks away, leaves everybody hanging. Hey, that phone call had to do with my paycheck, so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nice. This is, you know what's funny is I, I got a warning from StreamYard that I've already, like, I'm close to my max of usage for StreamYard for the, for the month. So I don't know what's going to, this, this last, this is probably going to be the last stream on this thing. Well, maybe we should uh, try Zoom. Zoom's supposed to be just as easy. Zoom? Zoom. Yeah, it's what uh, True Boys and all them use. I thought they were using StreamYard. Uh, they switch back and forth, and maybe that's for the reason, the same reason that uh, that we're having, you know? I think so. Um, um, granted, I don't know because I didn't ask him, but based upon what i saw on his last stream i think he did the paid version now of streamyard because he was able to get rid of that streamyard little logo thing ah. and now he's got his true boys logo so i think he's paid now oh, that's and that awesome. means that means unlimited streaming i think you only get like uh 10 hours of streaming or something like that oh well how much does that cost anyway have you uh, looked at it 20 bucks a month if you pay the yearly uh, fee up front. Oh. Oh, my. So, like, what? Uh, 260 Yeah, but that's still a little much. Yeah, but... Uh, that, yeah. You kind of you want to wait, I think, until YouTube starts paying you. Yeah. Or maybe, oh, uh, yeah, that's what RC Master is saying that he pays. He pays StreamYard now. Yep. RC Master never posts anything. You know what was funny was, yeah, oh, right. It all goes to spam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, he didn't say anything. <laughs> but uh, I've kind of, I, I debated whether or not to pay for this or not only because. Obviously, YouTube, well, you know, being being a new channel, YouTube's really not paying much right now anyway. But it's that thing where once you pay for something, then you're locked into it. What if another service offers, offers better? Because that's why I actually tried using that light stream because the quality of light stream, at least visually, and I think what other people were saying was that the quality of light stream was actually way better. It's just not intuitive, at least for Mac right now, which that's that that's or, the, and people were, weren't you saying people were having trouble getting on between tablets and and uh, yeah, it was uh, the mobile issue we were having right because right, you logged in and gave them all your information and now you got hacked and <laughs> <laughs> damn it! All right, what you working on? Oh, I'm putting the, uh, I'm going to put these new shafts in this transmission, but I'm going to go ahead and pull the engine on it while I'm at it and double check all the screws and put stainless steel and most of them. And, right. And some Loctite. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm tired of this thing falling apart in the middle of my videos and yeah. then I look like a dumbass. That's no good. <laughs> you know, when I could have got a lot more runtime out of it on my last video, but right it's whatever i'll i'll get it fixed i've never 
really had this thing completely tore down yet. So at least I can clean all the detail spots, oil when I need to oil, see if I need any bearings because I got tons of bearings, mm. um, all that stuff. It would be good to tear it all the way down. Because I need this, uh, I need this for the Super Bowl. I plan on riding it out at a buddy's house. So there you go. All right. But uh, I ordered the wrong. That same guy that I was talking to about the Red Cat website, I guess that was like a month or so ago, I was complaining about the Red Cat website. The same guy I was emailing about how much of a pain in the ass it is to find part numbers on there. Yep. Is the same guy that um gave me the wrong part number for this. Oh, no. Um, and, of course, I ordered it on eBay, so it's not like, or on Amazon, so it's not like, I, could, I, I didn't even message him back about him giving me the wrong part number. So I, I did my own research, and in a forum, I found the right part number for it. There you go. So, but, you know, it's supposed to be easy. They're supposed to know. I said, I bent one, my idler shaft, and I need need an idler, idler shaft. Well, he sent me, I guess, the shafts for a V2 version, the older. Yep. yep. And they're way too small. And they were like 20 bucks for the kit, too, so. Oh, well, it goes in my parts bin. What did I do with my drill? There it is. Hey, Vector, change your eyes to blue. <laughs> well, I changed his track, so... Well, mine, mine are listening to you. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I got the microphone shut off on my Amazon right there. All right. right. My Alexa, because of so, your so people can't mess with you. Yeah. Let all these screws are the same size. My Mac is going off right now. My <laughs> <laughs> master said, "I never post, but get subscribers somehow." People kept asking me to post, so I said, "I will post when I reach a thousand subscribers." There you go. Oh God! You know what's funny is that's almost like being um, uh, what's that from Home Improvement? That that, yeah. that show home improvement, uh, Wilson, the guy, the guy that you know you never got to see his face. Yeah, that's funny. Ooh, there's a long one. Oh, that's a motor mount. Whenever you're using a driver on these little screws, just, man, make sure you don't, especially these ones, just don't settle them all the way. Because you'll regret it. Zoom is fourteen ninety nine a month, but what's the difference between Zoom and Streamyard, though? Do you actually know? I don't know. No. That's what uh, Trash Ninja was saying. Zoom is fourteen ninety nine a month. I'm not um. I'm not popular enough to be. Oh, stop it, guy! That. You'll be get there. Experimenting with that yet? <laughs> You'll get there. Dude, it's crazy how. Fast, my subscribers have jumped up in the last couple of months. I'm at like 359, 360 right now. That's awesome. That means people like you. I don't know why. 
because they want to see you break stuff. Oh, and that uh, that last video I put out? Yes. I didn't even have to edit it. What do you mean? GoPro. I was transferring my file. Yep. And it's and it showed me a. I clicked on this little thing and it showed me the video that it made for me. Oh yes, yes. And uh, I was like, well, all right, I'll just post this. Yeah. <laughs> Was it any good? Because I didn't get a chance to watch it. That, I mean, it was really short, but um, I really only was out there for like five minutes. But the video ended up being about a minute and a half. Now, what? that was on the one where you've got it on the wall, right? Yeah. And that's how easy it is to take the engine off. Dwayne, what's going on, man? So that's the thing about having the comments on the TV. I cannot see them. Oh. What are you up to, Dwayne? Can you guys hear those loud birds on the live stream? Yes. <laughs> That's all I'm talking about because I I used to breed cockatiels. Oh uh, yeah, I've um we've only got one cockatiel, but uh you've I got those one. little birds, right? The little uh not chickadees, but the little ones. Is that what you've got, right? Par I got parakeets too. Yeah. Parakeets, parakeets. That's right. And then um, it's all the I, same. Got a, I got a son conure on order right now. Ooh. Um. Yeah, I can't wait to get him. Um, I got to order his cage this week. And I put a uh, down payment on them today. So. Well, it looks like I have lost a um, lock washer. That's no good. All right. Let's see what we got here. Oh, there it is. Right there. Ring is that quick to take your motor off the DDXL like that? I mean, I've already got this thing on the bench. Yeah, that was quick, huh? Well, since I know it's that easy from now on, I'm just going to pull the whole motor. RC tank using Zoom seems pretty good. Yeah. Hey, Vector, go to sleep. Go to sleep. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, mine jumps off because you told yours to go to sleep. <laughs> nice. I need a yoga mat or a magnetic mat. Yeah, I actually thought about doing a uh, little magnetic thing. Yeah, I was going to put one on top of this. I want to get one of those pro line ones. They're really nice. All right, Asterian. Later, Asterian. See you later, man. But yeah, the uh, reason why I haven't gotten a mat yet is I end up spending all my RC budget on RC parts instead. Yeah, well, that's where I think um, I think uh, Chef actually just uh, dropped some cash. Yeah, he hey, made videos. With all those okay. cars he's got, those nice cars that he's got. Right. So I actually think I'm going to work on. I'm actually going to work on this thing without the transmission being in it because it'll actually give me a little bit more room. So you can see the transmission's all back together. Very, very simple transmission. But what I want to do is now we can have access to. Oh, man, the chef doesn't want to come out. He's a little bit. Let's 
So actually just gonna clean clean these areas right now. Matt's like, yeah, I know, dude. I um I got a I gotta order a new kit. I've shipped out most of my good drivers. Um and on my list this afternoon is to get a new uh, Allen kit, not not the regular Allen keys. But the Allen keys, you really need them for um, for these really big ones. Like this is a, a 4.0, I think is what I had to get this transmission off with. So I really needed the uh, the Allen keys for these fish scales. Oh, that one's bent too. No, it's not. DDM. Yeah, I'll have to look that up after the video, dude. I've got some in my cart right now. I just got to go deposit some money in the bank so I can take one. I've reached my budget for the week. Those are the wrong bearings. I reached my budget for the next 10 years. I've spent a budget for $150 to $200 to spend on RC, and right now, I've been surpassing that budget. Very easy to do that. So here's the uh, part number for that uh, Stero, uh, st yeah, Stero. steering servo saver arm. It's uh, 94024, and that's for the valve MT plus two, if it even focuses on there. Right there. That's what we had broken. Or actually, that's kind of what what was broken, but the, uh, the 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 smash into the ramp kind of uh, finalized it for me. Ooh. So when are you doing the wide max kit? I keep saying I'm going to do it today, but every day that passes, it seems like it's not today. <laughs> I should do it today. Yeah. You should. So here are the basic parts you get. Mostly it's reusing your metal parts. Um, but, yeah, we're just going to basically transfer everything that came uh, from the old one onto the new one. So it's, just, it's, it's very easy to do. No complication. No complication. Here. So we did get new bearings too, so I'll go ahead and install the new bearings. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing too. What new bearings? Yeah. Well, that's all apart. Yeah, uh, putting the oil in there. All it does is just kind of. If you've got kind of like a loose uh, area, it just kind of helps keep the bearings in so it's not dry. And then just wipe up all the excess after the fact. Well, he's uh he's doing the basics on live stream today, guys. You know it. Take that little collar off that is a 1.5. 1.5. Take that little collar off.
Then you can slide that arm right out. I am going to re uh, Loctite these because I did break it. So, Watch out, headphone users. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they'll be hearing everything that goes on in the background, too. Matt's RC is going to be killing your ears. Just don't want to go back in. What is that ding? Is that you hitting hitting the uh, the bell? Yeah. Yeah. The clutch bell? Yeah, the clutch bell. Damn. It literally sounds like a bell too. Yeah, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. <laughs> like I was saying, even though those other two bearings weren't blown out, I am going to use the brand new ones just because. Yeah, well, since you got it all tore down, it's the best right. option, especially if you got them on hand. Right. That's why I figured now that this is tore down, the best time to do it is to now, instead of waiting on them to go bad. Plus, those bearings were expensive. There's no reason for them to sit on the shelf. These are the uh, the Fast Eddie's uh, ceramic ball with the metal, what do you call it, metal guard. It was like uh, 20 bucks for two bearings. For just two. Now you see why a lot of times I won't go live if those birds are going. Oh, yeah, no, I'm getting, uh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Let me close this door. That's a little bit better. You know, I, I could probably. Yeah, hold on. Let me mute it real quick.
All right, now all the banging is done. Nice. I probably should have done that to begin with. Ooh, that feels kind of... Oh, that's all right, I guess. Oh, Asterian said he was going to put out a video today? I think so. Is he going to put any editing into it, maybe? Is he going to talk? Yeah. Is I got to get him to show his face, man. I don't know why he's doing that, being afraid to show his face. Yeah. Uh, I was afraid for the longest time, too. Well, one of the biggest things, too, though, is that he's got to realize he's got to he's got to talk a little bit more. That way it's more engaging. When yeah. he jumps on, and I, I keep, that's why I keep prompting him, you know, saying, hey, Asterian, tell us what you're doing. What are you working on, brother? You know what I mean? Just trying to get him, you know, maybe yeah. maybe get him get a little more comfortable, you know? Yeah. Especially when we had hybrid on the other night. I really wanted hybrid to see all that stuff. Exactly, exactly. Yep. If anybody's going to get excited, it's definitely going to be him. He likes yes. his special projects. Right. But I think that's what that's what a lot of people have said in the past. You know, uh, a couple people that I've talked to, kind of off, you know, off stream. They're like, they're like, gotta get really, gotta get a stereo to, uh, you know, say something. Yeah. Use a little grease. I've been using um the the silicone WD forty. Actually. Yeah, well, socially awkward or not, I mean, you still, you know, you're you're with just a bunch of, you know, people that know who you are, you know, especially when you're doing a live, just, you know, jump on, part of the family, right? Make sure you wear gloves. Bearings in. Crank this up though. Yeah, it's a little bit better, I think. Now we get our uh, steering servo saver and uh, I guess you want to call it slave all ready to go. RC Master, you're right. I'm still unsure. I've asked questions the wrong way and received death threats. <laughs> no yeah, I remember him talking about that that one day. guy. Nobody's death threatening you. <laughs> Dick, kick him out. 
He's trying to cause. He's trying to cause trouble again. Look at. See, he's causing trouble again. Chef, <laughs> mm -hmm. what's going on, brother? You what's got up, both of us on here. You gonna jump in or what? Slykenese is here. <laughs> Slykenese. Pro I'm probably the only one that calls him Slykenese. <laughs> <laughs> Slike and ease. It's a special. It's just. It's a special name for the group. Oh wait a minute. Why do I have an extra screw? Oh, that's always fun. Oh, okay. I see where it goes. Weight reduction. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's what it is. I forget who I was talking to. Yeah, <laughs> I think it might have been Gus. Uh, he was saying something about, you know, uh, taking pictures or video, I think, of, of things, you know, so that he doesn't end up with extra pots. Yeah. <laughs> or he doesn't have leftovers or something like that. You know, it's funny. Oh, there we go. That's what I was looking for. I'm looking for this right here. So this is probably where I should use my stand. I'm guessing. That is the one thing about having these little vector guys, man. They mess with your stuff all the time. Oh, yeah. Non-stop. My custom stand. Everything's custom. I have no idea where my trash barrel went. Oh, chef is already gone. He had to go be. He had to go back to work. So that was that was the extent. That's pretty much the extent of uh, a break that Chef Beardsley get being a chef. Is <laughs> he basically, just be able. He, he's able to come on and say, "Hey, what's up?" Oh, wait, gotta get back to work. Yeah. Oh, he says he's going to be doing his first video soon. Oh, that's awesome. Dwayne is at work and still on. <laughs> Uh, this new gear set for the the Doom Runner, it uh, it just don't line up as good as the uh, the original Rampage gears do. But is that because that's some of the change between the two vehicles? No, all the the transmission and clutch and everything, it's all the same. Really? Yeah, they're like spot on the same. So what it is is just the gears are different then, obviously. Yeah, I don't uh, – yeah. I'm supposing the, the spacing between – well, not between the gears, but uh, – The spacers. 
the mat. Well, not not even the mesh, because no, it's not no. the mesh. It's the the alignment. The alignment. Yes, the alignment. Should kind of be showing this. I'm just uh, <laughs> I'm just re tightening the um, the servo arm. Well, not the arm, but the um, the link, the ball link that actually connects to the servo. Yeah, that's the funny thing about these transmissions. The mesh is nothing. You can't do anything about the mesh. Right. It's a fixed mesh. Yeah. I don't know what the heck Vector's listening to, but he's just dancing around here. <laughs> he's having his own little party. Pretty much. Yeah, this truck will be one more project off the list for today. Plan on putting the crate back together, everything except for the motor. See, that's what uh, he does. Hopefully right. before I go to bed tonight. See what he's doing? That's what he does. He comes over, he just starts pushing stuff. Uh oh, reset. Had a little vector reset over there, huh? Uh, I put him back on his charger because I shut him down earlier. Oh, right. too much. Sometimes he just runs his mouth way too much. <laughs> He's listening to Mets's birds, yeah. <laughs> Can you guys still hear him? I close the door. But they are pretty loud.
What's Darian? How'd it go, man? Are you gonna jump in and tell us what you did? Show us some destruction or what? I'm not paying attention. See what I just did? I just put a screw in with Loctite, and I'm not even ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good thing nobody on here uh, knows about these trucks, because they'd be like, dude, what are you doing? I knew you weren't the guru. <laughs> I figure at some point I'll stop saying that. It's probably just going to take me a while. <laughs> this is the plate that's supposed to go on first. This is what uh, kind of attaches the, um, the front diff. It's like a stiffener front diff to the actual chassis. It's got like an inset. And then you take those uh, top servo mount screws and throw them in. Not before. All right, guys. I'm going to get off here. I'm going to run up to Lowe's and get some washers for this thing. All right, man. So I can make sure these meshes are perfect. We'll see you guys later. See you later, man. Nothing special, just a wheel hut. Did you did you video it right? There's the link right there. Anybody want to jump in? You know what I wonder? I actually don't think I'm supposed to be putting this on. I'm not. I'm supposed to be putting the brace on first. See, I'm not paying attention. There's actually a brace that goes on to this that actually attaches to the shock tower. So how about if we try to put that on? Maybe that will help. Boy, I am not paying attention here. these screws in first you'll see what I'm talking about there's a brace this brace right here is actually supposed to attach there Sure is people. Now I can install this brace. And this Loctite still should be good. Come on. Where is it? That's better. 
That's more like it. So what else? Anybody want to jump in? Throw your throw your face on there. Don't be shy. Now I've got to pop off uh, these front shocks here, so I can access the the screw holes that are actually behind these shocks. So I'm just going to pop these off. These are just uh, lightly in, and then we will relock tight these, obviously. Once we pop these off, we'll relock tight them back into place. And can I pop it off? Nope. Let's see. Where's my screwdriver? little bad boys off come on there's a screwdriver I usually use to pop these off I just don't know where it is right now Come on, guy. It's no peer pressure here. Just jump on. Now you can put those screws through that brace or into the brace through the front here. Just tie everything together. Oh! Asterion, there you are, brother. I didn't even, they didn't even, the computer didn't even make a noise, man. Come on, RC Master, jump in. Don't be shy. You got Asterion here. Stop, Asterion. That's why I wear a mask. <laughs> what are you trying to say? You're trying to say that, uh, you look like, um, oh, man, where's my brain? You look like the guy from, uh, the elephant man. <laughs> you know what that is, right? The elephant man? The steering? Yeah, I know that. <laughs> So what did you what did you, you what'd you break? You said you broke a wheel off? The wheel hop, like Oh you stripped it? Yeah. That's no good. George, jump on, brother. No peer pressure here. Show your face, man. The guy from Mask, yes! The guy from Mask, there you go. Oh. See, my hands are not designed for working with these tiny pots.
Well, I'm not showing my face either. You, all you guys are doing is looking at this. Jump in, somebody. Boom. There you go. There's the key. All right. I am gonna. I am actually gonna save these bearings because these particular bearings actually did not blow out. We only just had that one bearing blow out, but since I'm here, I might as well just replace them all anyway. So I'll just end up. I'll put them back into the container with. Uh, with the uh, new bearings. So we only had one bearing just blow out, which was the lower bearing on the servo saver side, which is the one I'm assuming obviously gets the most torque. So no camera on your PC. Got to get one then. All right. So now we're getting there. Um, now we just got to, uh, wow, we got to lube these things up too. Don't forget to uh, lube up the ball ends of your vehicles. but wipe off the excess and make sure you wear gloves. I'm going to keep saying that. Wear gloves. It's the right thing to do. You don't need a camera, just a microphone. There you go. All right. So RC Master, you just kind of said it right there. Jump on. You just need a microphone. Come on, guy, jump in. Can't you guys just don't want to have me and the steering in here? Somebody else jump in. Let's go. So right now I am actually just attaching the link arms to the steering hubs on the beast. Come on, get in there. Damn it, get in there. You're just there. I solve other people's problems. Not well. Then we're having a we're having a stream problem here. Then we uh we need we need additional support here. RC Master. See, he just fell into a trap right there. We need additional streamer content. So jump in. So does everybody have a uh, preference on uh, work stands or whatever? Would you rather build one or buy one? That's a question. Be right back. All right, man. I'm just going to say I'm planning on building one. You have what? I'm planning on building a stand. A stand? Awesome. What are you going to make it out of? Probably like two wood plates. So one on the, on the bottom and one on the top. That's yeah, pretty similar to yours. Mine is just made from just stuff that I had. Yeah, um, that's my plan. Pipe foam, uh, two pieces of plywood, obviously a nice plywood base. And that metal thing that's actually right here, this metal piece, this is actually part of uh, an old uh, desk. It's the secondary level 
that goes to the desk. And I, it obviously had a screw that screwed through the center that you can actually see right there. And then I just basically just used washers and drilled a hole. And the thing is mint. Got pipe insulation on there that I glued down with my Merrimax that actually holds the vehicle on there. So it actually works out pretty good. I like it. And it was cheap, meaning it was technically free because it was, you know, using scrap pots. Estelle, I'm going to let you take over the stream right now. I'm going to let the dogs out. So you know what? Oh, yeah. Kind of, right? Boom. Professional content. A piece of trash. Perfection. Look at this. Perfection. Hybrid, not working. Perfection. A really good streamer, what do you think? <laughs> yeah. Like I'm interested. Like, if it's actually the first hybrid that's, like, driven on the same spur gear, like, I'm going to do more re research on this, but I think I might even have actually the first hybrid driven on the same spur gear. So, yeah, that seems bugs, but I, mean, I love it too. It's, I mean, it's cool, but... No. that stream alive definitely nice <laughs> i had to i had to go uh i had to go attend to my dogs all right so what do we got here so i think we are all set as far as the servo saver now uh the only thing is obviously at some point we are going to be filing down this side as well um, because now, so here, let me show you. So here's, so we got basically, we've got full lock to lock. And what's happening is we're actually getting this side striking right there where this side is not. So we definitely have a gap. And that's how much material I have actually... You can see the gap. That's how much material I've actually been able to scrape off of this. And once I once I file this side down or use my Dremel, it's a combination of actually filing different, I guess you want to say, touch areas on this actual hub end um, where it contacts here as well. And then obviously, you know, we'll be able to get better steering uh, both left and right. So, yeah. Oh, what, this thing? No, this is electric. Oh, you're talking to steering. 
Asterian's running on fossil fuels. <laughs> That's a good one, fossil fuels. All right. Well, I think we're good now. Now I just have to, um, we're going to reinstall the, uh, technically it's, um, it's a box, right? That houses both the, um, the steering servo and the obviously receiver that you can see right here, the antenna poking through. So, um, we're going to get this installed right now and then I'll rehook up all my wires. You have, uh, the ESC wire actually hooks in through this backside. And then what I ended up doing was, uh, notching, um, right there for the wire for the lights. It's just a notch. It's basically big enough to just allow the wire to come out and then attach the lights in. So, um, yeah. So now we'll install this box. Oh no. Now we'll install this box right here. That was weird that uh, the stream yard was messing up. You, you were part of that, right? Where it was uh, for for Earl. Earl couldn't actually hear Foundry. Asterion? That was weird. That was really weird. I didn't understand because I think other people could hear him. It just I think maybe for some strange reason Earl couldn't. Maybe he was too quiet. Maybe. I, I don't know. I was thinking maybe the sound from his shop was overriding uh, the microphone or something on his uh, phone because obviously he was using his phone. Yeah. Now to install this, we'll be getting rid of this for a second. We just lost something. All right. So you've got uh, four screws, two on each side, one here, one there, and then same thing on that back side. Watch your ears because I am going to use my driver to uh, buzz these things in if you have headphones on. If I can find the screw. Now, if you're using an electric driver to buzz things in, just be really careful. Shouldn't even have to say that, but I know somebody will complain at some point years later. You didn't tell me to stop screwing. <laughs> right, Asterian? Yeah. Come on, RC Master. Jump in, man. You know what? I'm going to use my magnets. That should definitely help. Oh, yeah. Your driver has a clutch. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good thing. See how the little magnet thing works? Works awesome. Now I'm just going to double check the torque. 
going to raise it right here just by hand. Provided I actually use the right driver size, which is a two. Yeah, that one's perfect. Perfect. And then while I'm here, I'm also going to check the roll bar. Oh, that was loose. That one was loose too. Nice. Good thing I'm checking it right now. Cool. All right, so now we can possibly install the brand new battery tray that I got. So we had to get a new battery tray for this thing because of that accident. So here's what happened to the old one. It actually broke off. So it's supposed to look like this piece right here is supposed to mimic that side. And when I slammed into the ramp, not only did it break that, but it also broke, which now <laughs> I use this as my um, my tray for my glues and my – here, I'll put all the stuff in there how it's supposed to. So now the old battery tray I use as a tray – for my glues and some of my, um, my stuff. So, you know, at least making use of, you know, what it was. But see how I left those screws in there? That we don't use. So we'll flip this around. So here's the part number for the um, large capacity battery tray from Hebao for the Hyper MT Plus 2, 94115, and that's large capacity battery tray. And inside this bag right here, it gives you – oh, it actually gave me new hardware too. That's a good thing. So it gave me new, new hardware, but – not going to use that. It gives you, um, oh, I thought it gave me new battery straps. It actually didn't give me battery straps, but it did give you like extra foam pieces, which we don't need uh, because I don't I don't use the foam. Uh, there's double-sided sticky tape, which that's actually pretty cool, but uh, I've got no use for that other than saving it for something else. Um, yeah, so now we'll just install this new uh, battery tray right on this edge right here. Clean it up a little bit. And it only really installed one way. Now, there's actually an inset that slides into the groove of the frame, just like that. And just like that. And you can slide it into place. The longer screw obviously goes to the forward position because that's going through a plastic threaded uh, nut that's actually designed for the frame. And the shorter one goes towards the back because the frame is actually threaded. So actually be careful with that. You know what? How about this? I'm going to throw some thread lock on there just so we don't lose that. Yeah, unscrewing everything. Yeah, by hand. Yep. Yeah, it's no fun. All right, let's see. How much do you guys pay to get taxes done? So I am actually a business, so I pay a little bit more. 
Um, it depends upon sometimes, I guess, your your prep. So for me, it costs anywhere between three seventy five and four fifty to get my taxes done. Rich Holman, what's it? What's up, Matt? Oh, what the heck is that? What's up, guy? I gotta pay attention here. Cool. Two more screws. They're obviously left inside this plate. These are definitely longer ones. Now we will put this back in place. Joining in from the fabulous Monticello, Montecito job site. Nice. Well, I'm glad you popped in, man. Wow, the stream's already been going for three hours. Holy smokes. Why isn't that going in? Maybe because it's not going all the way. Maybe. Let's see. Uh oh. Rich Holman's saying, what's up, Asterian? What's up, Rich? You know what? Why isn't this going in? There we go. Just need to use a little extra force. Come on. Nice. Done. Wasn't even on camera. All right. Now we'll flip it back. <laughs> flip it back over. Get rid of this. We'll hook up our servo. The only thing about that is I can't remember. Uh, you know what? Actually, we'll set that up after the fact because I can't remember if I um, shut this thing off uh, being um, straight or not. So, yeah, I guess not. Now I guess we can put the uh, transmission back in. So in the transmission, uh, if you've been here, we actually did go with 1 million weight inside the diff. So um, hopefully that's going to change the way this thing reacts. It is easier to actually put it in from upside down.
I am going to relock tight all of my motor screws that um, attaches the uh, two motor plates, actually to the frame or the chassis. Relock tight everything. That doesn't sound too good. Yeah. We just launched off the bench. My mirror fell down. Oh no. Well, you're lucky they didn't break. Wow. I'm glad nobody noticed that I just showed my face. Oh, you just showed your face? Oh, no. Well, you know what's great about that? Be able to see it on the replay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. And I broke the mirror. Oh, did you? What'd you I drive in? That's, that's what I call memories. Uh, memories. That's what you call seven years bad luck. That's no good. See what happens on live? Things get broken. It's the real deal here. Seven years bad luck. You know it, man. <laughs> you know what, though? Asterian, I got a question for you. Have you ever heard that before? What? Seven years bad luck? For breaking a mirror? Of course. Oh, you have? Okay. I don't know. Yeah. I didn't know if it was a thing that only happens over here. Here we go. Tranny's in. This bad boy's coming together. All right, what do I want to do now? I guess I could just throw the wheels on and then uh, power it up. And then I'll figure out exactly where the, um, where the servo arm attaches uh, on the spline. getting there it's gonna be the longest live stream ever So I'm not gonna crank these on. They're just gonna they're just I'm just gonna put them on loosely for now. And I'll lock tight them once I'm done.
that is cracking open the uh, battery box here so I can um, reattach my wires to my receiver. I'm losing my screws. right so the way they did this they did, kind of did this a little funny here they actually run the wires down and in between underneath this uh fake uh switch it's almost as if this is where the switch used to be but maybe they had um a different setup uh this must have been for when the uh the batteries actually used to be uh in here as well or maybe um another configuration i'm thinking for uh, nitro or whatever. But then just run your wire in here. Kind of makes it kind of almost semi non watertight this way. So we'll just run it like that. Good. Maybe superstition. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Stupid station. I don't know. You got to figure, you know. At least, you know, at least with my brain, the way it works, I don't know if everything is the same everywhere else, you know? Kind of like me thinking, like, time-wise, Asterion is running on... What time is it where you are? You're six hours... Are you six or eight hours off from us? Six hours. Six hours. So now we'll run our light wire. In here. Just like that. And we'll power it up. Boom. Done. Giddy up. So I just checked replay. You can't really see much of my face oh yeah good for me bad for you because <laughs> you want to see my face you're funny a steering you're a funny guy and also if anybody cares in a few minutes my eight minute long video is going to upload there you go people are people no matter where you go yeah Now here's the question. We are we are so close to being done here. Where's my remote? <laughs> oh no. I got so many of these habeos or habaos, I don't know which remote is which now. All right, so maybe I just attach some battery packs here. Uh, we got Traxxas. Traxxas. 
We'll put the thing on. We'll, have to, we'll, go, we'll put this upside down because I got to attach the servo. Arm. So we'll go upside down here. This remote now i'm assuming because this remote is really more dirty looking this actually might be the right one and here's what i did actually because i like i said because i've got so many so they've got a nice little area where you can write stuff so this is obviously um yeah hyper tt's remote that was easy. just use a uh, paint pen so once i find once i find out which one this one goes for I'll just use a paint pen and mark it up. So we got a couple batteries here. Let's give this thing. Oh man, beans. What am I saying? I thought that was tracks. It's like beans. All the remotes on. <laughs> there's, there's actually two, only two remotes with batteries, so let's see. Oh, look at that. It's the first one. So it was the one that had all the dirt all over it. So it's actually this remote right here, so... Cool. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? <laughs> See, not paying attention. We missing anything? <laughs> I put the transmission in without the drive shafts. Damn it! <laughs> it's always something, guy. What's well, funny is I'm looking at it, and I gave it a little, I gave it a little throttle. I'm like, oh, I right, check it out. <laughs> yeah, right. something's missing. Well, at least we can uh, we can set up the um, the servo. At least we are centered. I think we're good there. So that's centered. The wheels look pretty centered right there. So we're just gonna go for it, right? Like, come on. No, that's not right. Right. Right there. <laughs> See? It's always something, guy. <laughs> it's got no drive. And I am actually going to put Loctite on this. That would probably be pretty smart. Because we've already lost that before. Cool. So now we know this is the right remote for that. So we will actually write on this with the paint pen. That's why it sounded strange, yeah. <laughs> I label them now. <laughs> now that I get the paint pen. All right, so what are we going to call this thing? It's going to call this the MT, I guess, right? So we'll just write MT on it. M. Make sure that's actually going to work. M T. There you go. Hyper MT. Now this remote's labeled. And I lost the cap to the paint, paint pen. 
All right, cool. Done. Now we can go ahead and uh, reinstall the drive shafts. God damn it. We'll rip this thing today. I will be taking this out for a run today. So when you install this transmission, don't forget to install your drive shaft. Now we won't have to re-Loctite this again because obviously the Loctite's still wet. So there's no issue there. This had that uh, quiet drive. <laughs> it's the new uh, quiet drive system. All right, so there we go. Hyper MT now is ready to rip. Nice. So what do we do? So what do we actually do on this Hyper MT? We did a uh, one side new battery tray and frame mount. We um, we've actually started modifying the front suspension, and that's just by using a Dremel and. Uh, actually modifying the actual hub itself. We modified the driver's, I mean, the um, left side, not driver's side, because it's different everywhere. So we modified that left side uh, front hub. We do have to modify the right, but the modifications were just like um, seeing what was going to work, you know, while this thing was, you know, laid up and, and not in use. And now that it's finally in use, I actually will be taking apart that right side I'll be modifying that arm the same exact way because we actually, without the, you know, without the other side attached, we are getting actually more function out of that uh, left side. So, um, but that's, this is going to be nice. Uh, we replaced the servo saver and we replaced all four bearings in the servo saver, which consists of the actual servo saver um, barrel. I replaced the upper and lower bearing on that because the bottom bearing had actually blown out. Um, and we replaced the slave side too as well, the upper and lower. Mm -hmm. Just because, I mean, new bearings might as well. I am going to keep those other bearings, you know, maybe for something else. Who knows? Uh, what else did we do? We, uh, re we actually uh, took apart the center. Uh, we actually took apart the, the transmission. The transmission has a center diff actually inside of it. 
And uh, we ended up cleaning it out, which it had liquid bearing in there, which you got to expect. That's the reason why you actually do, um, I guess you want to say, service those by changing out the fluid. Um, we did go with 1 million fluid, so that actually should be pretty good. And right now, I'm actually going to... Um, I'm going to charge up a couple of batteries and, and take this thing for a rip. So it'll be nice to see what this thing does um, with that 1 million weight in that uh, center diff. So for you, oh, yeah. So anyway, so that's it. Uh, nine people. How are people staying on the stream? That's insane. The stream is now, uh, you know what? It's actually been a, it's been an average stream. About three and a half hours seem to be what a lot of my live streams uh, end up being. So, uh, mesh on this. Mesh is actually perfect. So, yeah, I'm going to charge up some batteries. I'm just going to end the live right now where it is. So, thank you guys for hanging out, whoever was here. Uh, Styrian, thanks for being on the live, man. Sorry you broke your mirror. Oh, yeah, look at that. You broke it bad, too, dude. All right. But that you know what's funny? That I, don't know you, I don't know if you caught that comment, but somebody had said that having that mirror like that is actually pretty cool because it gives you it almost gives you a double perspective. That's that's a real good idea, Asterian. That was my that actually was my idea. So I have to front you have wheel, to, you have to patent wheel, it. Wheel. You have to patent it. Oh this yeah. Is the, this is called the Asterian view. That's a that is really a good idea. I might have to steal that from you. <laughs> All right, man. So I'm just gonna end that live. Like again, thanks everybody for coming. And I'm just gonna end it with you guys looking at this beautiful beast that is finally back together. You got a Styrian showed up. We actually had uh Foundry RC, he showed up, Metz was on, uh Earl Moorhead, Earl was lost. Earl's been found, so if anybody's worried that uh, Earl hasn't been around, he actually showed up on the live, showed his face. He's actually been just wicked busy doing 18-hour days, so we know what it's like. You know, sometimes you got to do what you got to do, and Earl is a very busy guy, and that's how he's got what he's got. So uh, that's it. So there you go. Just going to leave it on that. Asterian, say goodbye to everybody. Bye. Check out my video. <laughs> Bye. All right. See ya.